for me, as an only child, not having any siblings, creating has always been my grounding process. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today we have Harry Vincent back on, a longtime friend of the channel, as well as a super talented designer. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good, thank you. It's good to be back on. I think it's almost a year to the day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it seems like for uh, a few of the people that I've done like repeats, it's worked out about like eight months to a year since. It's a good amount of time to like recap but just enough to not be like it was so long ago i don't even remember what was going on you know yeah yeah but it's a nice little kind of chapter like milestone kind of thing as well right so what have you kind of been up to this week oh um just been a lot of i've just been booked up on typical agency work really um which is nice um i think i think last time we talked about how this what my kind of chunks of work is and like you know figuring out what the best practices of getting clients and stuff but i basically figured out that i have just a lot of nice straightforward kind of um client work and then i have like quite more sort of artwork based things you know people that come mm -hmm. to me for me kind of thing right. um and that's creeping up more and more now um i think it used to be it's that nice. i only had agency work and stuff but um now it's people will, get, will have a way more direct clients, which is very nice. And it clearly shows whatever I'm doing is working to some degree. Um, yeah. You know, trying to put it out there, isn't it? So yeah, thank you. Right. What's the, um, what's the agency work? Are you talking about like working for an agency or are you use an agency yeah. to get clients? Yeah. Yeah. Working for an agency. So a lot of them like are really lovely. Um, I feel like I'm lucky enough to be quite selective of what agencies I work with. So, how um, does that work? Yeah, so a lot of it's just you, initially it would just be they'll find you, but then once you hit it off, you know, it's kind of like a nice work relationship once you're familiar. Mm. But um, a lot of them, it's like people that I've either worked with when I was employed or um, right. Just again, just online social media, or like it'll be like a LinkedIn thing, or um, mm. they'll find you most likely. Or recruiters, they're always pretty handy. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That stuff's nice, man. Like uh, I do work sometimes for a few agencies that I worked at in the past, as well as just these different, um, like more Hollywood shit, like stuff for mm. films and stuff. And it's not like my favorite, but the budget's always there. They always pay me. And like it, it just propels me for more freedom to do like the other shit. And it's not yeah. that bad, you know, it's still like, no. it's still design. Like I'd rather do that than other shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's like it, all, it furthers you still because it's like it's an experience. You'll learn something. Um, mm -hmm. You know, nothing's really a waste uh, project wise. Like you'll learn something, even if it's not necessarily skill wise challenging. It will be like, you know, uh, practically you'll be like, okay, I'm going to invoice now <laughs> rather than after I send things and that mm -hmm. type of thing. You just learn, don't you? you? I think it's kind of part of it, isn't it? You don't necessarily have to have exciting, cool stuff all the time because it realistically doesn't come around all the time, does it? Right. So, um, yeah, it's kind of nice to have that, isn't it? You, you learn or you do cool things. It's kind of, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's kind of it. Um, which is kind of nice. There's kind of something too, too, like, um, I'm not saying I like doing things that I don't like. However, mm. there's something valuable in doing things that aren't you aren't comfortable with or maybe mm. are out of your like wheelhouse and style or maybe you think are boring or not something that you even want to put in your portfolio. However, yeah. like you don't make the you, you don't make yourself do those things on your own. So when someone else makes you do them, it it like switches your mind up a little bit, you know, and it gets you back in that like, well, I have to figure this shit out. You know, it's different from creating art for yourself where like you make all the rules and, and that's it. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can easily also get trapped in that. I think it's like, uh, you kind of need both if you want to work on what your style is, but also right. then have the, the realistic limitations of a client and which I think is where the best work comes out. Of, Cause like, you know, like you said, when it's all your own doing, you can, you can never really quite hit it off, you know, like you can probably do something really cool and amazing, but I feel like you learn from doing client work and then you channel it into doing your own work and then right. your own work gets more client work and it's like this last little yeah. cycle then. 
Yeah, right. It's, it's crazy because like um, I was uh, like, sometimes I'll work with clients and, you know, you, when you submit, like, let's say it's a logo or whatever, when you submit that to them, you're not thinking, you know, this needs to be changed. Like you're feeling good. Like you've been sitting with it for a while and then maybe you have a revision, right? And yeah. maybe you think, oh, like fuck the clients or whatever. Like this is perfect. But then you come back and it's better than you had before. And in your in my head, I'm kind of like, damn, like maybe they were right a little bit, you know, like when they when that person pushes you that extra like 10 percent, it always turns out better. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And it's kind of a nice sentiment like where it's like you, you kind of need other people, you know, like whilst a lot of us have spent time sitting at a desk with a screen and we're by ourselves. Yeah, and yet, I think the past two years, people working remotely has become a way more accepted thing and the fact that you can work as a team remotely, but also the value that you do also need your own time, but then that submission, that kind of, you know, that, that, that vulnerability that you have in there when you submit yeah. is it never, it's never easy and it's never, it always surprises you. And I think that's part of the nice bit of the process, isn't it? Yeah, it really is always surprising because when it goes bad, you think, oh, damn, like I thought it was, it was, I thought that mm. was good, you know? And then when it goes good and, and they're like really praising you, you're just like, oh yeah, like it, that's how it goes, you know? Like you never know yeah, yeah. how it's, it's going to turn out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's lovely that. Like, it, and it's also just, um, cause you know, when things go really well, there's almost like no learning curve to it. There's like, uh, you know, mm. you've done, done well, everything's good. It gets done and you kind of move on. And those you feel like there's they're probably like a missed opportunity sometimes. You know, you kind of wish you were grilled a bit or you wish that right. actually there was like some kind of back and forth. Cause I think you know, with the process as it is, there is a back and forth naturally. You know, it's ideas that are in flux and then you know, there's an email ping and then there's like calls. It's very collaborative. Right. It's not just one person going off doing something and then that's it. Um mm. Which is where I think it very, it's very, that's where the subtle differences are between kind of what art and designing is, is that, you know, there's different, there's different kind of, there are almost two sides of the same coin sometimes where one's very much has a message and an intent and maybe doesn't, and one, the other one doesn't have a message or an intent, you know, they can both exist. And I think they're very swappable sometimes, mm -hmm. but I think the intent's what separates the two really. Um, right. But yeah, like, it's interesting. I love, I love, it's nice when it goes right, but then you get, you get, you second guess yourself for like, oh, okay. Uh, cool. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. And, and there's something to like, um, when, when it goes so well and maybe in your head it was like very efficient and you finished it fast, that mm. is probably a byproduct of you getting better and learning more like how to, how to execute on these ideas like quicker. But when you do something so fast, sometimes you almost feel like ashamed. Like it was like you didn't give them their money's worth or something, you know, like you finished it yeah. too quickly and that's a weird yeah. feeling. And then both, both, both can exist and they exist at the same time. And I mm -hmm. think you're right in the sense that when you, what are you always learning or challenge something that you didn't have before? Um, right. Cause it's always something you discover. I mean, what was it the other day where I discovered that this whole new little function and I was like, oh, I was like, oh. for ages yeah. I've struggled with this and accidentally because of what was happening, I just discovered it. Um, right. And that now is logged. And then next time I do something, I'm better. It's all about this kind of like progress thing, you know, like this mm -hmm. is why like it's important that when you do have something difficult or like there's a difficult client or like there's maybe a period where you have like burnout, those periods are still, you're still learning and doing stuff because you're either recuperating someone's, you know, kind of narrowing and also refining your ideas. But then that's part of the whole process because otherwise if you did everything good first time you'd still be the same designer you were five years ago. You wouldn't progress. You wouldn't have the experience, which you? you wouldn't have the, the fidelity of knowing, oh, that's going to happen this time, or you won't be as informed. All these, they all stack up on each right. other, don't they? And it's a right. nice 
it's a nice curve because you know it'd be a shame if you were the exact same you know creative as you were five years ago wouldn't it, it you'd feel mm. and it can feel like that sometimes but when, especially right. when you when you kind of maybe see you maybe look take it a step back or you burn out and you kind of go oh, i've not done anything new but then you you then forget the years and multiple projects that you've done that it's easy to forget when you're in those modes but sometimes it's nice to go oh, shit, actually yeah, I wouldn't have tackled that the same now because I tackled it before. And it's like a video game, isn't it? You kind of die, right. <laughs> respawn, and you go, yeah. right, you're going down like again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's true. Uh, that's like the simplest way to put it, pretty much. <laughs> um, when, you, when, you, when you learn like a new thing, too, I feel like I learn the most stuff with the client work because when you're doing mm. your own stuff, you're always just doing it your way. And yeah. you don't try the other thing because you're just like, this is how I do it, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. There's like an egotistical easier. side to it where it's you kind of, yeah, you kind of, it's like a, it's a classic kind of thing of not being present, isn't it? Where you, you're going, yeah, I've done this before. It's just going to be the same situation. You try and do it the same. You're going to do it the same. And actually, like I said, those times you probably missed something or there's something's been robbed kind of either it's yeah. you or where you're like, Oh, I just approached that the same way. We didn't learn anything and it's all just gone good. And Oh, there's no transformative process. Cause it should be transformative, shouldn't it? You shouldn't be the same, you know, person pre a project, post a project. There should be some kind of thing. It shouldn't be negative. It shouldn't damage you, but it should also, there should be a level of change because otherwise, right. You know, whether it's monetary change, um, you know, you've done a really cool piece of work or you've done a piece of work that you haven't done before or you've, right. or it's just been challenging or you've learned it at all. It should be an amalgam of those things, H- hopefully all of them, but mm-hmm. it will be a lot of them mostly, wouldn't it? And even if it's like, um, you know, like negative, then mm. maybe the experience was negative overall and st- instead of that being like, yeah, a discouraging or damaging thing, that's just... Um, that's just how you learn. Right. So mm. then that doesn't happen again. Like I, I, yeah. I think I forget who said this quote, but it was like, I never lose. I just win or learn, you know? Like yeah. That's so, basically yeah, how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Not, you don't, nothing's wasted because you can learn from it. And I think, yeah, it's along the same lines. But. Right. So speaking of some new stuff, since we uh, last spoke, we both started up the newsletter and <laughs> kind of followed the, Bronx email is the mothership like mm. methodology or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and yeah. how has that kind of process been for you? And if you want to, can you talk to me about that a little bit? How you've been enjoying yeah, that? Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you jumped, you, you, you took the initiative first on that one. You were like, <laughs> I'm going to do it. And I love, cause you have a nice format, you know, you've, you've got it, you've got it down to where, and also is it, um, what software do you use? Is it, um, review? review and you can, you can, it's very integrated, isn't it? Um, but yeah, Yeah. you know, where you have, there's like a topic and then you have your, either it's a discount or something new in the shop. Um, it's kind of a nice kind of format to that. I mean, whereas I think, yeah, mine took a bit of kind of getting used to it's weird, isn't it? To, to have, cause it's a, it's a different platform. I mean, you haven't done a newsletter before, uh, you know, it's weird. Um, but yeah, it, it, it kind of has evolved a lot. I think the first one was, but then that's the point. It's the first one. Like I did it, I committed to it, it's done. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of evolved into something way more, more of like a, like a, like a kind of spoken word thing where it's just me going yeah. off on something. And it's virtually, I just type it on my phone. Like I'll, I'll be on the toilet or I'll be just on a sofa and I'll be like, Oh yeah. And then it, my fingers just keep going and it's very unedited. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been really nice and it's growing a little bit and people, I've had a lot of comments and replies and people have DM me saying, Oh, thank you for just saying that. Or oh, I loved it. Cause it's so raw. Um, it's kind of yeah. really nice feedback to have and it just makes me go, okay, well, this is clearly a thing. And, um, I'm so glad I've kept it up and I'm um, excited to keep it up as well. Yeah. And since it's gotten to the point for both of us where it's like, um, I think maybe I'm like five or 10 ahead of you. Right. But mm. like somewhere in that number where we're at, it's starting to already feel like, um, 
not in a bad way, but like, I have to do it, you know, like, mm, all right, okay. well, we got to do the next Stop one. Like it. we can't, we can't miss it. It's part of the, it's part of the schedule now, you know, or part of the yeah. habits or whatever. Yeah. That's it. I think, I think it's, it's kind of important to have that. Cause I think it's like an expectation thing where it's like, you know, every Friday for me, people are expecting this thing, but it's also, again, it's, it's a conversation cause it's like, people yeah. go, oh, I really like that topic or oh, thank you for sharing this. Um, I think I've clocked that people tend to like the resource one because I think a lot of people that are subscribed are other freelancers, or other designers or creatives. Mm. So I kind of know my pool a bit, um, you know, but my mom obviously subscribing without question. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be people that are like me that, you know, are on the, or want to see what's on that platform. And I think you probably see it seeping out. Like I, I think I've noticed since doing it, even in other platforms, I'm way more, way less contrived or edited. Um, yeah. Especially like Twitter or even Instagram now, I've, I've, I've kind of got rid of just posting the work. I now do like a bit of a caption with it. Yeah, I like that. Like I wouldn't have done that before. <laughs> like I would have just gone, eh, title, date, right. font's done. Um, whereas now it's there's a bit more of a conversation. It's a bit more, it's a bit less pulled back so to speak mm -hmm. um but yeah like it's good isn't it it is good and i've been trying to write it too in this way um I watched this YouTuber, uh, Van Neistat. It's like Casey mm. Neistat's brother. He just mm. like fixes shit, all this like typical kind of manly crafty shit, you know, or whatever. But he always mm. talks about typing on a typewriter and he says, <laughs> because when you mess up on a typewriter, you don't just delete, delete, delete and restart. Mm. You write to like fix it. So you're like me and Harry were talking, it was 12 PM. And then it's actually 1130. He doesn't go back, back. You go, wait, no, actually no. it was 1130, you know, like you talk more like how wow. you would be thinking if you don't edit it right away. That's why I've been trying to write the newsletter and I'll go back and fix the spelling, but I don't edit until I'm done with the full mm. like actual words, you know, cause then you don't, yes. you don't like limit yourself on like, oh, that sounds stupid, you know, like delete, delete <laughs> yeah. or whatever. You just let yeah, it go yeah. free. Well, the whole point is it for it to not be edited. Like I think both of us have a way of showcasing our work on whatever platform it is. You know, we have a process, we have a presentation way, mm -hmm. and I just think it's like maybe time to just really strip that back and just kind of, you know, go as it went. I'm still navigating what that is, but yeah, you know, even just having multiple platforms, the newsletter is a new one for both of us, which I think a lot mm -hmm. of people should kind of get on with. Even if you're not saying anything, it's more just we all know how algorithms change and how yep. stakeholders just one day decide to be another app. And then they, it just affects your income potentially, or your, the way mm -hmm. of showcasing your work and getting potential clients, isn't it? And I think it's right. one of those ones where it's never going to change. People are always going to have emails. It's tried and tested. Um, and I just think it's like diversifying it, you know, rather than it all eggs in one basket kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. like, instead of just posting my work on Instagram, it's actually now more Twitter and dribble than Tumblr and my own site and newsletter. It's a bit maximized, right. so to speak, to put in content terms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it kind of just enables you to reach more people as well overall, isn't it? Because I think a lot of people will be massive on Twitter, but then have no, they've only just started somewhere else or so be massive yeah, on there weird. and not on Twitter. So it's about kind of spreading. <laughs> Okay. Also, everything has a different, um, like, I don't know how to explain it, but maybe like a ratio to it. Right. So, a mm. uh, mm. hundred followers on TikTok is probably only worth like five newsletter people. Right. And then those yeah. five newsletter people is like 50 Instagram followers and yes. 25 Twitter followers and maybe a thousand on, you know, uh, Facebook or, or whatever, mm. but like, yeah they all have like newsletter. I only have 200 something, but that mm. feels like those 200 feel like they like yeah. it. It's like 50% open rate or whatever. And like mm, they're no actually way. replying and stuff and yeah. other platforms you can have 50 K or whatever. And it's like 10% of the people see it sometimes. So it's weird. Yeah. And it's not even up to me or you. And it's not also down to what we're doing or creating. It's more just, mm -hmm they favor certain things now 
but yeah, you're right. It's very it's from a poet. It's, it's rather than a follower. It's more of an audience member or even someone that's more aligned to you, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is important, like you said, too, even if you don't have, I talked about this in a video I'm about to put out, even if you don't have something to sell right now or mm -hmm. something to even say, building the some kind of email list, I think, is like mm -hmm. invaluable. And like by the time you do have whatever to say, maybe you have like a few hundred, you know, that you collected yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that's it. And, um, you know, people very rarely change their emails. I mean, I recently did like a, it's kind of goes against what we're saying, but like I, for my more personal stuff, I have unsubscribed for anything that's a shop. So mm -hmm. like, so I don't just randomly browse and go, uh, oh yeah, it's just another 50 quid just spent on something I right. didn't, didn't actually want until I saw the email. So they clearly work. And, right. but yeah, I've, I've done that personally um, so that I don't spend <laughs> anything I don't need to get. Uh, but like anything else, I'll always subscribe to, you know, other people's newsletters or, you know, community-based things or news-based stuff is always good to just have straight in your inbox in it. So. Speaking of like using that more and some of the other stuff, I've been seeing you use like Instagram and, and a few other things a little bit more um, kind of like stripped back maybe and like a little mm. more minimalist in that sense. And what has your kind of relationship these days been like with like those different apps? Are you kind of just more posting and then kind of putting it away till the next time you come around to post? Yeah, it's kind of keeping it at bay kind of thing. I think, um, I think no one has a good relationship with their phone nowadays. Right. Um, but I think I have a, you know, I've been able to have a slightly better one in the sense that I've just cut out anything that isn't, you know, necessary. I think you've, I think you're pretty sure you've looked at digital minimalism before. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Like it, it's just trying to be purposeful. I think, you know, I used to have a personal, like, you know, Finsta. Mm. I signed out of that, like, last year because i just realized i was just kind of wasting time but also right. just it wasn't fulfilling it was kind of more showy offy look what i'm doing whereas i'd rather be on there with intent and i think my, my post today was kind of like a most of my piece today was kind of like a thing of that where it's like i don't want to be two anymore i just want to be one I just want to always be harry vincent i don't want to have to split or carve myself up um, mm. I just want to be able to just navigate all this just as one and have multiple elements and shift into things, but not have to carve myself up and not, and not, and have to be like one face for one thing and sign into right. another. Um, and I think that's part of that process where it's like, if I'm online, I'm going to be furthering m me and my career or, or, um, collaborating or being involved in the design community and stuff because right. That's what it should have, should be for. It doesn't mean I also chill out. I still watch a heck ton of YouTube and downtime and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of that. It's very much, I'm in, I'm in here to do this thing and kind of nothing else. Um, right. Because I think the real moves are made that you don't see as well most of the time. Um, so yeah, yeah, thank you for noticing. Yeah, it's just, it's part of just a new way of tackling things really. Yeah. And I, I definitely am into that. And I made that whole video about it. It's funny making a video about not using that stuff because it's kind of like <laughs> ironic, you know, but, um, yeah. uh, I've gotten, I would say I went like 80% like digital minimalist really good. And then I got all the way back down to like 20% of what I was. So like back into the most of the bullshit, but I, there were some things that stuck and now mm. I'm back a little bit to the middle. I feel like it's just, um, it's like a drug, you know, like people that relapse, mm. like every time they come back, they're a little bit better at not doing it the next time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It can be. Um, I think someone like, it's like people check their phone like 140 times a day. Like That's it's mad. mental. Yeah. yeah like, and I think, yeah, like even, I think you've like, I, I don't know if anyone knows this, but I lock my phone away when I'm doing like anything. Yeah. I do that too. I don't do the literal lock box. like you, but yeah. I put it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, the literal lock is like, I'm still very much um, a physical, you know, tactile person. I think mm -hmm. like you're saying with the type and stuff, like, I think I still think those things to me just have a bit more of, oh, cool. Um, yeah. Even though a lot of my stuff is very much now 100% lives digitally. 
Yeah. You know, but I think it's using both. So like I'll lock it away, but then I also have focus mode enabled, which is amazing. Yeah. Because, yeah it just blocks anything, any numbers, any calls. Um, and it's just a really helpful thing to have. But yeah, it's like it's sustaining that kind of um, zone of kind of flow state that people call it. Um, right. Because I think there's a lot of interruptions. There's a lot of distractions. And it's not about working harder or smarter or better. It's just about filtering out the distractions. And like you right. said earlier, like part of the part of that is me just being if I'm going to be online on those platforms, it's being there intentfully. And I think Twitter's the one where it's like it's it's fun and also intentional as well. Like I've discovered so many people on there. Yeah. Currently, currently it's a really good platform to have, and you know it's such a balance because of how the format is. Everything a, a post, an image, and a comment is all has the same weighting. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's that, good. Isn't it? Um, and retweeting alone basically means you can share stuff, which I think is the the downfall for the other platforms. The resharability is not as the same because it's on another section. There's more you know friction I mean? like, too to get someone to do it. It's like three yeah, buttons, you know? Three it's not yeah, like... yeah, add the story. You know? <laughs> also, I've seen you talking a little bit about uh, music and like accompanying the tracks and mm. things with some of the stuff that you're designing and you'll say like yeah. you know this is a companion piece to the to the <laughs> post or whatever and how yeah. important is like music to you and when you're creating stuff and how does it impact your creative process and what goes into that stuff yeah sure yeah it's it's only again it's like part of the new format that i've kind of tried to that's still evolving and never stays the same um but yeah it definitely does accompany it because i think I don't really think I create in silence. I don't think many people do. There's something going on. Right. Um, recently, I just discovered like drone metal, <laughs> probably, <laughs> where it's just like, mm, and it's just like mm -hmm. heavy, but just long and sustained. And it's like perfect because it's it's what I've been needing for a while. Um, but yeah, it's very important. Like, cause I think it's a, it's a, it's an art. They're very closely aligned you know, those two art forms where it's visual media and sound media, you know, there's, it's very much, they're very much entwined today. They, a lot of things go hand in hand. You see an album cover first and maybe listen to it after, or some people nowadays, they only listen to it first and then they don't experience the vinyl or anything until months or weeks later because they pre-ordered it. It's a very different experience, isn't it? Right. So yeah, it's, I think it's, they're very much entwined and I think, you know, it is, it's no reason why a lot of designers' work is so in, ingrained with music labels or musicians and that artists like that. It's because they're very much intertwined. And I think it's one of those things where it's like, you know, they're like our sibling industry kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love, I, I think the only times where I intentionally don't have anything on is like the very first thing in the morning. Because um, yeah. I just want to be able to just do a new piece and then then I'll, then I'll get settled in. Um, but yeah, and it also, I think there are, you have, you have moods and I think everyone's music taste is multifaceted. You might be one genre, you lean to more, but mm -hmm. there are definitely times where I'm like, ah, oh, fancy some craft work actually, or I'm in a talking heads mode or now nah, I'm actually yeah. in like a deftones mode. Um, yeah. And I think it's very important to have those, aspects because you know they are still all your identity i'm not just someone that listens to death and listen to all sorts of things yeah um i think it's yeah it's, it's kind of nice i think it's very symbiotic that kind of you know sound medium and visual medium they go together quite well and um, i think kind right. of one of the people to properly blend the two i think where he's conquered producing, conquered that, he's con like started fashion now, and now his sound stages and set designs and concerts are all much the, an amalgam of all of that, aren't they? So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's very interesting, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, I also noticed, like you said, I agree, multifaceted, like genre listener or whatever, myself, and sometimes you feel like, you know, depending on the setting or the people you're with, like you, that one side takes precedent. Um, mm. When I work and I listen to records, it's mostly uh, more chill hip hop, um, instrumental stuff, house, jazz, blues, like anything that's a little more, mm. 
you don't have to like it's not going to distract me you know it's more in yeah. the like creative flow but when i'm driving mm. like it's all hardcore punk and like maybe <laughs> stuff that's a little heavier and like i want the windows down and shit and like i want it to be yeah. louder i can't listen to you know knocked loose or whatever like when i'm working because that shit's like it's just too heavy you know and i'm trying to concentrate and then uh, you're out is- like I don't know, uh, when you're out at a party or something, you want like that club shit, you know, it's all, it's all different. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's funny you say that. Cause I, I'm, uh, am I, I'm kind of fairly the opposite. I say, I like, mm. I need sort of the, um, I need the stimulation cause I'm like, yeah, what I'm doing is like on, but I think yeah, you're, okay. but also you have a really nice self to be able to have. And I think that the, your taste kind of shines through a lot with the pieces you create. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, I could totally see you jamming away, um, at this very desk with, mm. with, with like, um, you know, uh, some of like a jazz thing in the background and it's, I can literally see you doing it. And I'm like, oh, that's the piece that's come out in those zones. Cause I can see it. <laughs> right. it's, I can see it come through. Um, you know, because like you said, the, 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 om- the ambience and was, was channeled, you know, you almost like you're there. Um, and it's like mm-hmm. you said, it's not distracting, but it can come through as well very subtly. Cause they'd say if I were to trip, we were to trip or, you know, someone to flick it, you would be out of you. Oh, oh, oh stop. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would, it would unsettle you, even though you may not notice it. It's like, it's kind of your way of getting into it, isn't it? it kind of comes through in it. <laughs> right. Or if like, Sometimes like it's hard to listen to my um if I'm doing like digital listening like uh, Spotify or whatever it's hard to mm. listen to just all my songs because that shit's just too much all over the place like Jumps, yeah. it's going to go from like yeah like hardcore metal and then it's just going to be like techno or some shit and it's mm. like yeah. it's kind of weird you're like what the fuck you know what's going on like you're out of it I've been trying to be more intentional even when I'm digital about doing like you know more um album like listening or mm-hmm. like specific yeah. artists listening because yes yeah. man like we're doing a we're always preaching about how like people need to like you know care about art more and blah 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 but then we can't even listen to a whole album we only pick out all the all the best ones nah, you know yeah. so yeah but i don't think that's necessarily awful i think it's more just a, maybe it's just a generational thing where yeah, you know, right. me and you have grown up with MP3 players. At the very earliest, we always had a Walkman, right? Mm-hmm. But then it's so accessible now, and like streaming and that can, like you said, digital music and digital listening. Like you, that's a good way of putting it. Um, you know, you can skip things. Yeah, you know, like, like we were saying earlier with like typing, like you can just undo the type. But we, but we're so used to that as our norm. Whereas mm-hmm. there's some, there's some kind of beauty in the sense that with records, I think that's why they're. You, they've come back up is, you know, you can't just skip and go, you have to listen to the whole album because that's how it's made. It's intent for the right. made like that, isn't it? Because that's how you could only ever listen to them. Whereas now we're so used to skipping and uh, it's boring. Why are they saying yeah. Donda like 20 times? What the hell skip that? Like, yeah. you know, like uh, it's that kind of thing. And it's not, it says anyone's fault, but it's just a, just an accessibility thing. We've grown up with a certain way of, doing things with technology and but I think there's, there's, there's a sweet spot sometimes just before it. There's a reason why the late nineties came up with some some of the worst, you know, culture changing stuff is because it was that sweet spot. Yeah. With pre social platforms, pre smartphones, you know, pre accessible, not like high technology that we probably would have called it back then, you know? Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I agree with you. There's there's like a nice, you know, it's like a there's like a difference, you know, but it's like you said, with digital listening versus stepping a record on, there's a different intent when you're listening, isn't there? And there's more, um, like I was saying with the other thing, there's more friction. Like you can skip mm. the record, but am I going to go over there and pick it up and do it? Like <laughs> no, I'd rather just no. sit, even if I don't like it, I'm just going to wait, you know, whatever. Yeah. Just yeah. let it rock kind of. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you too about, uh, we were talking about it earlier, but I forgot to get to it. So the, you've been doing the, uh, Instagram stuff and, and on Twitter as well, where you're trying to credit like down to, down to the different aspects, you know, fonts and, uh, what music you were listening to, where you got the fucking texture, the hex code, whatever, like you've been getting pretty like granular with it. And I was, curious. Yeah. I like it. And I, I think it's been inspiring me a little bit to do it sometimes. 
and uh, maybe more selfishly because I'm just sick of people <laughs> asking me what thought it is or whatever. But it, um, yeah, it what be, made you think of that bad. idea, kind of to kind of do it that way? Yeah, yeah. Initially, can feel very. Uh, it can maybe come from a, from a selfish place, like like, just like, oh, yeah, mate. I've just said it in the caption, like, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, but no, yeah. Actually, funny enough, I think uh, Caroline was the first person that I mm. saw, right? Even just listed the typeface she was using, I was like, oh, why am I doing that? So then that that was the first one, but then yeah. I think recently that with my whole kind of shtick of um you know trying to refocus and trying to um you know make people realize that like it's, it's kind of up to us there's a there's a level of power in the sense that if we start creating and hopefully like you said uh, it's lovely to hear that you probably go actually i might start doing that because that's kind of the purpose it's kind of normalizing yeah. editing um I feel like our industry doesn't do it like photography You've got it like down to a T. Like when you see yeah. a photography shoot, that list is stacked. Isn't it? It's like who turned on the fucking air conditioning in this <laughs> yeah, in the studio yeah. or something. But it could be like they, they could have yeah. like oh at twelve thirty p.m. This person nicked in, had a cigarette, and they kind of caught. Yeah, for that real, they're good with it. Like yeah. they could do that, and I think it's just normalizing. You know, it, I don't think this has to be pedantic, but because we're here, we need to be over here. So you have to be mm -hmm. a bit more extreme and pedantic to, to try to yeah. pull everyone back up. Because I think internally, we are very we're creatives, especially. We kind of we have an internal invalidation that every every creative has a level of post imposter syndrome. There's also right. a level of insecurity as well. Most people they really flip between really being really egotistical and then really insecure. But I think most people they were at this kind of middle spectrum and to the end where, you know. We we kind of need that internal validation. I think part of that is the, the, there's a lot of fear in it. Like people go, oh, should I post my work and get stolen, or should I? Um, oh, um, there's like a people. I feel like there's a there's like a sort of stumbling block sometimes in, into becoming a creative because it's like, oh, where do I get this from? Where do I do this from? So it's kind of yeah. twofold in the sense that it's it, like you said, it's kind of finally selfishly sh just telling people where you got stuff from but for me the kind of tertiary effect hopefully is that people start realizing that shit someone designed that typeface that I probably pirated and i shouldn't or that mm. image i've just took off pe pixels or pixabay or something like or unsplash like you know so a photographer has taken that and i think there's this internal kind of you know like i said even we do it it's like we kind of will rip fonts or rip textures or rip images and not to ever, we'll never think that it's someone else's work, but it is, yeah. but then expect the same thing done to us. And I just think yeah. it's a way of challenging that and going, well, you can't, if you want to expect it, do it to other people first and then see what happens. Um, so yeah, that was part of it. It's kind of twofold. Um, so yeah, thank you for noticing. It's kind That's of, good. it's interesting to see. And it's quite hypocritical, yeah, to expect all this like credit and praise even when, I mean, how much, I don't know how many things I've downloaded off Unsplash, you know, <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, no fucking yeah. clue who took the picture, <laughs> but um, also it kind of destigmatizes like, I think for me at least, I don't know if other people feel this, but when I was first starting out, I felt like everything that I put out, I had to do everything in it like yes. i had to make That's everything fun. and if yeah. i used a font or if i used um an image that i edited like i almost felt like i had to act like i made it or something because it was like i don't know yeah. less original but then you realize like everything is just a combination of different things even if you're yeah creating everything from scratch you're still like building it off of like things that already existed at some point yeah that's it you're you you're dead right away it's like you're just, uh, yeah. You're just, you're just rearranging and recomposing elements mm -hmm. that already have come before. No matter what you do, um, and it's it's how you compose it, and you know why you've chosen certain things and not others. Um, that's where the uniqueness comes from. I haven't invented the color, you know, FF three C zero zero. Like mm -hmm. that existed before me, and it was just after me. More people may use it because of me. I don't know, but you know. 
I, it's how I've used it and then in conjunction with other stuff. It's how you've composed it, isn't it? Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's, it's that element of, because I also think it, when you do start crediting, when you do realize that, okay, this is someone else's work, I'm remixing it. You will then start to then properly go in when you make your own stuff from scratch because you'll realize and go, actually, stock images don't do it justice. I need to learn 3D or actually yeah. I want to illustrate that now because I've done, I've done eyes, I've done hands. I want to illustrate them now. And it, it weirdly, like I said, it kind of pushes you to then actually probably do way more of your own bespoke from scratch work mm-hmm. than you would have done before. That's what I found anyway. Because um, it's not just juxtaposition then. You can go, you know, because I think both can exist. You know, I definitely have an illustrative style and a type style, but I also have a mixed media style. Now I've got multiple ones because it, it, it shows you how you can, you could give me and you could get the same stock image from Unsplash. We could do a little hour speed run design session mm-hmm. and both come up with completely different things because it's how you compose right. it, not necessarily what you use. But it's important that if you are using other people's work to showcase that and credit it. And um, yeah, it's definitely, you're definitely spot on. Right? It's like, you know, nothing necessarily is new, but it's how it's composed and how someone's arranged it, which is how it makes it its own. Right. And that, um, that book I always recommend, like Steal Like an Artist, there's this mm. quote that he references in there. I wish I could remember who said it, but it's something like, uh, everything in the world has already been said, but but mm. no one was listening, so it must be said again. Something like yeah. that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. I wanted to say, too, speaking of you, you've been, you've been doing a lot more... I guess like different formats and stuff like on that I've been seeing you posting. Yeah. You have like the illustrative style, the mixed media and stuff. And it seems like you've been experimenting a lot more and like branching Mm. out from some of the stuff that you were doing before. And what kind of caused you to want to, I guess, I experiment, I guess is the word more like that (laughs) and to try out new things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Thank you for noticing. Um, I think it's like a, it's just a classic existential crisis thing where I do the typical stuff that I guess I'm mm-hmm. known for, like using that Kern typeface, changing a letter, maybe an outline or an illustration. And then I kind of get this plateau of, oh, but uh, actually I kind of want to do another different thing. But then I, you know, but also I try not to intentionally overload myself, which is what I know I tend to do where I'll try and pick up too many styles or pick up too many things to do and then actually do none right. of them. Um, right. but yeah, it's definitely been a very much a, a daily process. So like I've been trying to create a new piece every day, give myself a set allotted time and stick properly stick to it. Cause the people will probably never see, or there may be one day, like there'll be so many versions of the po- of the new piece that I've done that I've posted. Um, but I just happened to choose the one that just kind of clicked maybe after right. the seventh time of rearranging it or changing the color palette or something. Um, so it's very much in this new thing of keeping my finger on the pulse of creating and creating more than I'm kind of taking in as well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be very careful because I don't, I, I've never been a TV person only when I was little, but even through school, I'd rather just like watch something that I actually wanted to watch like YouTube. YouTube has been very much a, thing where because it's such a great great resources on there um where i just want to watch something specific and i think streaming's helped that for a lot of people but i've been trying to get a balance of if i'm watching a doc you know you know like it's almost because they're they're treats because i've i want to be able to do those things but trying to always create just a little bit more than i'm taking in because then i'll start refining hopefully because yeah currently i'm experimenting currently i'm like oh We'll try the split half red and black thing. We'll try this type set, big stack thing. Yeah. And each one I do, I kind of go, oh, but next time I'll do that, I'm actually going to change that mock up for right. the way I've done that texture. So it's like each one's a little bit of a refinement. And I think if I could put it in like a visual way, I'm kind of just kind of mining down and sort of chiseling. Each one's like a chiseling of another area. So hopefully I'll unearth what actually is and you can only really find your style or find your way of doing things just by doing more of them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's been a nice little thing I've set myself up to do because also for me, as an only child, not having any siblings, 
creating is always been my grounding process. So, mm. you know, I would have Legos. I'd create insane things like transformers out of Lego that could transform. Um, it was it's always been a great. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was. Oh, so I did Optimus Prime. I was like, right, I'm done. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it's always you know having gone through a lot of. Um, I've been lucky enough to go on a lot through a lot of therapy last year, realizing that it's a grounding process for me creating because. You know, it's something that I can always retreat to, but now luckily I get to be able to do it full time and get paid for it. And that's why it's so intrinsically tied to me. I couldn't think of not creating things and not, right. you know, you even fully see, cause you're all my close friends. Like I'm always tinkering at something else, like making some mad shoe or tweak or cutting up a jumper or, you know, right. because it's, for me, that's always been the thing, but now my commitment is, is finishing it though. So previously I'd leave things unfinished. And then now it's mm. about setting myself up to finish it, whether it's good or bad, spending mistakes or not, just release it. So I'll, that's where you get the feedback. People go, oh, I really dug this. Like someone commented there, yeah. it was lovely. They said, oh my God, I spent 10 minutes looking at this because I was just in amazement. I was like, wow, what's such a lovely comment to have? Yeah, that's good. Um, so yeah, that's basically, it's just like, it's, it's a way of chiseling away of what I'm trying to just sort of in, in the self-discovery really. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, I feel too sometimes with trying a lot of stuff that sometimes I get into this feeling where I, I'm bored, I want to do something different, I'm doing the same thing, and then I do mm. something different, like, let's say, for example, I've been doing a lot more collage and, like, analog oh, stuff that is so less, as well. thank you, and it, it's like, it's not even, you know, graphic design really at all and, and then sometimes I do if I do that too many times I start to think oh well you're a designer like what are you doing like this where's the type you know or like where's <laughs> the like this ain't a poster like it feels like I'm not allowed to do that too much like I gotta stick to the little area and it's weird because there's like a line between you get bored doing the same thing and then you do too mm. much different things and you're like, what the fuck am I? Like, what am I doing? You know, like yeah. it's weird. Yeah. Well, like, you know, there's like a, there's like a cop inside your head where it's like, ah, oh, uh, this isn't allowed. This isn't red. Like, don't can't do yeah, that. Yeah. Like this is like you said, this isn't got, I actually had the same dilemma the other day where I was like, wait, there's not this artwork doesn't have any text on it, man. Like what? <laughs> Like, yeah yeah but then it's like no i'm okay to do that because i'll just do another type slide which is why i love doing the photo dump kind of thing now right but i think it's great like I, i've loved your what have you called them like skater cocktails or something yeah yeah is that yeah. What you thought of them? Yeah, yeah i was like, calling yeah. it um some dude gave me the name actually it's gonna be called like skating not stirred that's gonna oh, what, what we're gonna yeah, call yeah, the series yeah. And how did you come up with that? Like, did you see something one day or is it something that because you've, I've noticed you should be doing way more sort of analog based things, like even the yeah. post it, um, like collage today would sit. Oh yeah. That was fun. So like, um, yeah, so maybe, but it is fun. Creating is fun, isn't it? Like when you yeah. get able to do it, um, it's good. So you what, you know, I'm interested to see like, is it because you've consistently tried to push doing analog things and kind of, like you said earlier, building stuff from the ground up or did it just come? Um, boredom, did you say? I'll say so it's kind of like I think a, a lot of things into one so one I've been doing the it's like a, a butterfly effect right so one mm. I've been doing more collage first with my own found imagery stuff I just already had then that made me want to go out and get more shit so I went shopping for um, some vintage like magazines at the, at nice. the thrift stores and stuff then yeah. I found like this guy that was running this old like skate shop while I was there. And he's like, I have all these old like Thrasher magazines. Like, do you want them for like a dollar each or whatever? Yeah, nice. So I just bought like all of them. There was like 20 <laughs> or whatever. And then I've always liked skateboarding and stuff and I don't skate anymore, but uh, I'm still interested in like, just, it's cool, you know, it's cool shit. Mm. And then I found, then I, I was like, all right, this is cool, but what can I, what's different from, you know, cutting it out and having the background be like a planet or some shit, you know, and like kind of yeah. shit that's already been done or whatever. And then I went to this other store and I found this little weird book. So it's the New York bartender's guide, right? Wow. That was and so it has all these images that are just like different drinks. And I was like, oh, this is nice. cool. 
Like, yeah. let's just cut, let's just cut these out and try to, you know, scout the Thrasher yeah. mags and figure out which, which tricks would blend with what shape of the, the glass or whatever. And I'm going to make like yeah. eight and we'll just, I'm only limiting it because, um, not because I don't, there's like infinite possibilities in there, but I want to, I want to get more back into where like, it's like a project, you know, it's not mm, just like, yes. How many things can I, I have all this shit on Instagram, but none of it can all go together into one thing. It's just kind of yeah, like sure. all like over the place. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Who yeah, knows what I'll do with yeah. it, but. No, you're right. Like it, it's kind of nice to have that. Cause then, you know, once you're done, you can then evaluate it. And then mm. if, there's, if there is a part two or hopefully there is, you'll go those eight that I did shit the next eight. I'm going to do this thing. And I think that that kind of iterative process, isn't it? Yeah. Where it's like, you know, you've, you've tried to, you've, you did the hardest thing by posting, because I bet you're shitting yourself posting that first one thinking, yeah. Oh, oh, it's going to happen. Oh, <laughs> and, oh, it's not a poster. Oh, yeah, you I know, it, it's, it's, yeah. but I think that's, that's like a growing pain though, isn't it? It's nice. It, it is nice after you do it. It's not nice doing it. Um, right. but yeah it's like a nice growing pain because you put it out there and people go oh shit kind of this man like what are you going to call it and then that's what happened wasn't it i know when you, it's like cool you're just like <laughs> oh it worked like, <laughs> like fuck it either way i'm gonna finish it but the yeah, fact that it's like it. validated too it's like all right thank you, you it's know? Like Appreciate it. and even if it isn't validated today you have no idea that someone could come across it in your body of work later on and go sure. shit that collection you did yeah, it's some like a, a vibe that I fuck with, and um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's very, I think it's very important. Like you said, like it's you don't know how. I think you need to push the boat out far to then rein it back in. That you can't sure. rein out something that you've not thrown far enough because it's just going to be exactly where you've, it's going back in your hand, isn't it? Right. Um, and I think it's this that level of not doing too many things or not doing anything that's going to overburden you or stress you out. But also not sticking to the same. There's this kind of little sweet spot sure. in the middle where it's like it pushes you. It's a bit anxiety inducing when you release it because you don't know what the feedback's going to be like. But I think that's a very important thing because that's how you grow, isn't it? Like Definitely. I mean, Jesse, as of post doing, uh, how many, how you done? You've done quite a few now, haven't you? Like a good couple. Uh, yeah, I've done more than are out, but yeah, I've yeah. Done a few are out. That's yeah. what I mean, whereas you, I bet you today, if you could tell yourself that like, you're sweating posting the first time, but that's right, mate, they're going to love it. You yeah. don't know that at the time, do you? you? All you think of is the fear of the rejection or not liking right. it. But I think that's important to have, isn't it? It keeps you in check almost. Um, What's crazy too is um, we were talking a little bit about the different work. You know, you have the agency work, the you get hired hmm. for the more stuff you like. And I've been posting all that analog stuff and like, obviously that's not for any, that's just for fun, right? That's an uh, escape from the, the other, the other stuff. But then I recently booked this project that we were talking about the concepts. I can't talk about it fully, but it's going to be mm. like a project with this brand mixed in with like where I'm also posting it. So like a design right. slash creator, like sponsored thing. And, cool. um, they're the whole time they're like here are the concepts but like we want you to do like all this like analog shit like we really like what <laughs> you're doing on instagram and i'm just like oh fuck this just opened <laughs> up like a whole nother box of like you can actually get i can actually get hired to do this shit too you know yeah yeah it's kind of like it's like an element of um like uh, i don't like the saying but it's like fake until you make it kind of thing where it's yeah, like yeah. you did the hard thing first of saying fuck it i'm gonna do this thing and then, like I said, that, that's like the secondary tertiary impacts of that is people, they lay it down the line going, oh, you know, because instantly, yeah, you could get rejected. People could take shit, unfollow mm -hmm. you, but fuck them. If they yeah. don't vibe with that kind of prices, then, then they yeah. weren't, like you were saying earlier, they weren't like, when a, they weren't an audience, they were just a follower. Because mm -hmm. um, there's a big difference, isn't there? So, yeah, it's good. It's always interesting that. And I'm glad that it sounds really cool. Um, yeah. It's kind of nice, stuff that? What are you uh, kind of planning to do? Because I've been seeing you do the, I saw you make the shoes with the mm, the yeah. big old like chunky, whatever you took that from and then put the Chuck Taylor on it. And then I've also seen you do the jumpsuit thing, the mm. t-shirts that you kind of like 
whatever that was like the 20 random things you sent out that shit are you what kind of got you interested in this whole like fashion like textile design thing and are you planning on doing anything like i guess super official with it or anything or is Mm. it just kind of for fun yeah i think everything starts out for fun when you don't realize why you're doing it i think you know yeah. you, you, you like you said with that look you go that's for fun but now you're like shit actually this could be my thing um right i think i'm i'm forever in that kind of mode with especially with like, like you said fashion and textile i think it's something that i've always it's always been a part of my like identity like even in school in sixth form or college as you guys have where you've kind of left school but it's like a precursor to going to university and okay. you're not in uniform because we have uniform over here all harry potter like and um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but six forms this kind of weird sweet spot where you're still at school but you can it's kind of college but and you can wear what you want oh, and okay. i remember i was just where the maddest shit i'd be like i'd wear like red dot lines you weren't no one else like it's just a thing like and i think it's always been closely in, in sort of twined with my identity with how i dress and present myself mm. and stuff that I also feel like I have a take on things that you know, maybe, you know, just, I don't know. My, my big thing is, and I think there's an element of recycling with what you're doing with, you know, it's like a fancy way of reworking something that already exists, you know, like the yeah. books that you find, they already exist. They've been technically discarded. No one gives a fuck about them, but you've right. given them a whole new lease of life, even if it's digitally, you furthered the lifespan of that object. Mm. And it was the kind of same thing, even with those shoes. Like I just, I had, I got, I always buy a secondhand clothes now because I'm fortunate enough to be able to, because I can find my size and also can afford it because sometimes it'd be quite expensive, but yeah. it's about kind of, you know, the, all those boilers, all those overalls and boiler suits, they're ex police uniforms that mm-hmm. I found on eBay as a bulk load. And I was like, ah, oh, that'd be interesting if I could print on those. And um, so I ordered a bunch of them and I wor- now I've worked out how to screen print. It's just a case of actually, I've just rethought how to use them and how to properly rework them to almost like genuine pieces rather than yeah. just printing on them for no reason. Um, so yeah, there's an element of like, you know, reworking, up- upcycling, but I- that word to me as a loaded, image upcycling yeah Um, i think that's my ethos if i were to do and when i start doing kind of clothing or um fashion where it's like it needs to already exist because i don't think we need to make anything new anymore we've done we've invented organic teas we've done it all you know i I don't think it's up to any individual's responsibility for the planet because i think we all know like five companies are responsible for the damage right yeah i think because I'm able to, and because I know that that kind of could be the future of fashion where it's like, you know, that you don't need to buy new clothes anymore. I think that's very much my flag in the ground with that. It's like, I don't, you don't need to buy new clothes anymore. Is the term of right. new. Um, because I think there is an aspect and there's a way of having things that already exist. Cause even if you look at like fashion trends, a lot of it is stuff that you've probably already owned at some point. It's so weird. Mm. And yet people go out of their way to then buy the new version of the thing that they probably owned about 10 years ago, or five right. years ago, or one year ago. And it's like people should be taught to wear or shown how to utilize what they already got better rather than buying new things. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, it's a little bit hypocritical because I still have to make a new thing out of it, but it's more the ethos of just I don't need to get a whole new insanely clean blank off of yeah you right know, a company like they already exist they're already in charity shops they're already somewhere in that instance anyway um about just all the stuff i've been tinkering with and just you know trying to see how i feel because i think currently they are that but it's something that i've always wanted to do and the t-shirts were kind of a good good feedback of like, oh, okay shit it worked and it's a thing but i think with what I'd like, I need to have more depth to it, more kind of right. not just printing on a thing because it looks kind of cool. It needs to have more lifespan to it. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Like, I think hopefully they become more than that because um, I think my track record of selling products isn't that good. Um, <laughs> so I think, <laughs> yeah. you know, and not, not that I'm complaining because there's still so many people regularly buy this. There's loads of repeat people that will buy like, a new pin or print and I, I love them for it. Um, I just think 
I'm tinkered away because I want to find the thing that is actually going to be the one thing that's my own, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a process of that because I think like, like I was saying previously, like I'm always working on something, not in a toxic way, but in just a mental way of like, Oh, I might, what if I did that next time? I might do this next time. Like, you know, like you did, it almost feels like impulse buying, didn't it? I bet when you bought those 20 Thrasher books, you're like, ah, that's it. Like, it's kind of nice. You get like a thing. Yeah. Thing. But I think that's the point. It's like a, the process is you have the idea, you ran through it to the end, you executed it, and then you just have like a new one and you go through again. Right. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the process, isn't it? Because if you don't post it or finish it, you then don't get the feedback to then do the next one. And it's part of that process really. Cause yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to turn these into reality, but you know, like when I do the, the mock-ups on like the old phones and the old Game Boys, like yeah, yeah. very soon I'm trying, I've almost cracked how to actually do them because you know, they even like Balenciaga, the, their recent invoice, they just engraved on old used up broken iPhones. There's, you know, shit already exists and just repurpose it. And then I took that into more of a de- digital ethos of like, you know, I'll never put an artwork on an iPhone because fucking everyone does that. And they have to update it in um, four months. <laughs> right. Um, whereas that Nokia's, that's, that's static, like, in people's head, that image of that hasn't changed. And there's something nice about old, outdated tech that still right. works. I think, I think someone, there was this fantastic article, can't remember who it's right, but like they basically said, like, if your new software can't integrate old software, it's then shit software. Mm. You know, we were in a, we're in a, in a sort of society or, you know, yeah, like society or world where people constantly want a new thing and we want updates and refreshes and stuff we forget that sometimes things don't need to be refreshed because they are as they are. And if they aren't broken, don't refresh them. Um, right. You know, they just need to be kept going. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of that vibe. But yeah, I love coming. I love, I think both of us have gone through that journey of always coming back to do it, doing more analog things or starting from a scan or starting from a sketch and then building it back mm-hmm. in. I think it's, it helps dictate your process a bit more, doesn't it? Whereas, I sometimes get sick of sitting on this little little thing. <laughs> Once yeah. I love it to bits, it's kind of sometimes you like you want to go out of your comfort zone a bit. Um, and I think it's exactly. always a good thing. The so the last thing I want to ask you about is so you put me on to the mystery school stuff. I haven't gotten mm-hmm. too far into the proper documentation, but I have listened to all the podcasts, the make art, not content. If you guys mm. want to, that's what I'm talking about. If you want to check it out, um, listen to all those very digestible, very good. And, um, you always post the Bronx, like little, I don't know, proclamations or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call them, like little quotes that he does and how you seem to really, that seemed to really have had an impact on you. So I'm curious how important discovering all that was to you. And is that what kind of inspired you to, double down on like sharing your voice and like representing designers and kind of like the contract stuff and, and all that, mm. all those things. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I, I think, I think it's just everything that he puts out. Cause it's just, it speaks to me so much, but then it's, it also shows how much of a learner we all are and no one's mm-hmm. got it figured out. Um, you know, heck, they'll even be spelling mistakes in the very messages he puts, but it's kind of not the point, you know, like, right. um, it's, yeah, it's had a profound impact. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's definitely made me question a lot of things and maybe draw back, but I think there's, there was two very important things that, that I got out of doing a lot of the processes, a lot of the documents and a lot of the, the workbooks that are in there is it kind of, it was two avenues that I'm still at the crossroads of for my, my own, I've, I've put myself there mm-hmm. um, where it's like it, the clothing thing, as we've just mentioned, but the bigger, harder task thing of kind of rewriting the design industry, because if someone like me, who's like six years ish, cis, mainly white, you know, dude from England, mm-hmm. able-bodied, very little, you know, mental health conditions. If I face some struggles, then fuck me, does then basically anyone else does, right? Yeah. 
you know, because acknowledging that my privilege puts me very, very towards the top, if not the top. If, if my, myself and you or any other, even English speakers and stuff, like if we're facing these issues, everyone is then. And yeah, it's, to me, it's very important to, you know, I, I, the main driving force is that is I, my thing was is that it's an, I feel like it's an industry that doesn't learn from itself. You know, mm. I'll, I'll go through the same shit that I went through when I was 18, 17, first dying out. Why? You know, it yeah. seems like it doesn't evolve, does it? It's very, it seems very, very dated. 30, 45, 60 pay, day payment terms, no paperwork, you know, exposure. Like, it, it seems like it just hasn't learned. And I think the main thing is, is that the main vice that I've discovered and the consistent thing is, which is where things like Emma Burr's spreadsheet, amazing thing. Yeah. Like, it good, shows good. you the need for stuff like that because the industry preys on inexperience. So how do you solve that? Well, we can't change the companies wanting to prey on people. That's always going to be the case when money's involved. But what we can do is the kind of, not necessarily even out the playing field, but bump it so that the people that need more of a bump get it. And the people that need more resources or more handing off of that experience needs it. Yeah. And weirdly, you know, the, you know, I set up that Discord obviously over a year ago now. And only recently did I go, shit, that was kind of the subconscious reason why you did it. You wanted a space, which I'll start, which I'm starting to branch out now because I've had a lot of calls with the love, some lovely people that I've met, yeah, including Emma um, and including some other people from other people's own experiences with not having paperwork and being essentially abused and exploited by certain companies mm-hmm. and laying the foundation for, you know, like a something that I think we need, which is something that's resourceful, but also not just that, because I think the resources currently already exist. They're just not in one place, but they're also not tainted with experience that often. They're not accessible enough. You they're know what out I mean? of like, touch 100%, like Aga is lovely, but my God, are some of the articles at a bit, like a bit way out of touch in terms of how accessible they are and like what they're talking about. And I don't think it's niche or specific enough either. Yeah. Whereas me and you have the experience, even mine and yours experience would help about 50 people out, even if we just went, right, this is a thing that I've done. Because then it's all about, I would love for the fact that, you know, someone starting to be a designer or be an independent creative today, learned from my experiences that I've had for mm. five, five, six years. Because it's isn't that the point? Otherwise, it's a right. shame, isn't it? Yeah, I think Jack, Jack album up from album up, Art Case, um, tweeted like if he had my contracts and his own social media templates and Emma Burr's a spreadsheet info, you'd be yeah. in a way better spot, wouldn't you? Um, so yeah. yeah, it's part of that basically. I figured out those, and that's the harder route. With, but I think that's the one that you can even see I'm physically, I get physically like, you know, pissed off because we all, it affects right. all of us. Um, so yeah, hope that's my thing. It's, it, it will hopefully be, which was drawn out of me, part of the mystery school process is like, is creating this almost organization thing that is able to offer that space and it will have multiple touch points, hopefully. Right. And it will just take a while for me to build it to go bear with. Um, but also I need other people's help to do it as well. That's why I, I always am an advocate for all that. And I always say yes to your, let's build these Avenger propositions mm. and stuff. And I don't know how many times I've shared the Emma resource already and mm. your, um, your contract. I just, pretty much have them on like a shortcut on my iPhone now whenever people <laughs> message me on Instagram. Uh, it's exclamation point HV and exclamation point burrs and then it'll just link to the to Wicked, the thing, that's right? Cool. And um, I think we need some kind of, this is easier said than done, however. We need like a AIGA, Adobe Max, like future, like Chris Doe thing, but for like people that are real people, not like this... Mm. Uh, you know, mm. Pentagram, Michael Beirut, like agency yeah. professional well, that's charging like design, 50 grand for like, a, you know, a flyer or whatever. Like we need mm. something that isn't, that's in touch enough to not like, um, to say like, don't get ripped off, but not out mm. of touch enough to be like realistic and be like, who's, who are we talking to? These are yeah. people that are still learning. So there has to be some kind of 
I don't know. It'd be cool to do like now that COVID's easing up, it'd be cool to, I don't know, somehow organize some kind of actual event that can also stream out at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's it. It's, I think it, it has to have multiple touch points and be accessible. And like, it's been on my mind for months and months. Like it's been ever since I kind of started delving into myself through the Mystery Squad stuff. Like mm-hmm. I, I kind of, it was the one bit, cause it, like I said, there's two roots for me. It was like the clothing thing, or is it this, you know, potentially industry changing thing, hopefully. And, you know, they, they both wrestled with one another. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like, it needs, you know, it needs, it needs something because I think currently there, it is kind of there, but it's very scattered. And I just think, there'll be a, there'll be a nice handful of people that have one, the influence, but also the, the expertise and also the, the ability to have to do it. And that's yeah. kind of my, been a bit of my call out recently. It's like, okay, I'm down. Some other people I know are down. Um, I won't say the publicly cause I think they'll get a bit scared, but you know, like, you know, there's a lot of people that are down to do it. And I think once you realize there is a bigger picture, cause I mean, when Emma dropped that spreadsheet, I think it's got like, I can't remember what she said, but she said like, there's at least like a couple, like, like a thousand or at least more than that, like actual info in there. Yeah. But and I had like 20K. It, yeah. yeah. Nuts. Nuts. And that's because, and I said to her, she did the most bravest thing, which was, right, I'm just going to do the spreadsheet done. Didn't even think about it. And she was like, yeah, like three columns at the beginning. And now it's got like 36. Like, right. And that's exactly what it is. It's very organic and fine because when you start having people's input, which is the most important thing, you get it gets way more out of it if you're just everyone just keying in and just stuck to those three columns we wouldn't be where we were today with it would we so it's all about that kind of aspect because you're right like Ager and like even like the those adobe max spaces and stuff they're great but i just think they miss they get that the cream of the crop which is like agencies that pay to be there in it or people Mm -hmm. can afford to be there and do those things but i think there's way more people you know starting out or even they're fully fledged and still learning because that's still you know that's you can yeah. be 38 and just start designing it, it doesn't right. the experience doesn't have an age wrap to it um i just think it's very important that like you know everyone everyone gets raised to a certain bar kind of thing and that uh, it just eliminates people being exploited at the end of the day because that's what does happen and it's normalized the exploitation it's like oh well you know i didn't sign any paperwork and they own everything and they didn't pay me <laughs> and, uh, because yeah. it's also the because it's twofold also because we i think we're getting to a point now where people are aware of contracts and we were starting to share them out the more crucial stage is enforcing them because i've had mm. it multiple times where people are signed shit I mean, I still suffer, even though they've signed stuff, but enforcing it is proving the harder thing because it costs a lot of money to enforce that type of thing. And I think culturally, they people know that, so they kind of yeah. take advantage of it. So that's another aspect that could also change from it as well. You know, speaking, I've spoken to a lot of lawyers and people from different countries that have different law terms and stuff to figure out what an international thing would look like. Because mm. like, for example, you probably know what work for hire means, and you know all the yeah. ins and outs for that, because it's a very American term. But internationally, that alone doesn't mean anything, um, mm. which I discovered recently. I was like, oh, I've heard that, but I don't really, you know, because it's more, it's way easier, more universally accepted to say who owns what, rather than to saying work for hire, because it doesn't mean anything right. to a lot of people. So just as an example, because I, I, I had that terms of thrown at me a lot. <laughs> so, mm. um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's something, it's a, I feel like it's a big task, but I think it's one that's necessary. And like, I feel like, yeah, it just keeps coming. It keeps coming up. That's the thing. It's, it's, it's almost annoying how much mm. it comes up, but it's not annoying because actually it's sad. And it also, it's something that I feel like is doable. It just takes a lot of right. work and a lot of time. It just takes more people than me to do it. I think I, mean, right. I can only light the fire, kind of thing. It has. It would have like a lot of touch points. I think, like you said, there would yeah. be, you know, be conferences. I think the Discord and community aspect is the most, the best thing that would be about it. Um, yeah, right. that's a good. That's a good thing. <laughs> well, um, I just want to say before we get out of here, thank you again for coming on. It's always good chatting with you, Harry, and uh, everyone. Yeah, go check out Harry Vincent newsletter. Uh, 
you know, website, Instagram, all that, I'll link in the description. And thanks again, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having me on again. It's been lovely to catch up and it's lovely to see the, the difference in such a short period of time as well. Of course. Thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Peace out. See ya.